Hello again. So in the comments on my last video, it was strikingly close to unanimous that y'all want to hear more of my casual thoughts about upcoming sets. And that's cool. I can bring you another one of those right now to talk about the Star Wars sets that have been revealed as of the time of the recording of this video publicly, not any confidential watermarked stuff. I like being able to just do something that's casual and doesn't require you know, thinking about balancing things out carefully and, you know, being a little bit more structured and all. This is just my thoughts as a Lego fan, and in this case, as a Star Wars fan. So let's get started uh, with one of these sets. This droid gunship is going to be new for 2019, but it was also new for 2014, the last time they did one of these. That wasn't that long ago, and I kind of feel like this is a little bit of a, a niche sort of thing that might not have really broad appeal. I think the figures look pretty good in it, and the build looks like it was updated nicely. They got rid of a feature that I thought didn't work all that well with the bomb drop before. Now they've got flick fire missiles. Those don't work all that great either, but uh, I just don't know if there's enough room on the market really for this to be a successful product. And you know, if it doesn't sell well, then it won't sell well. It's no skin off my back. I actually have a little bit different view on this ATAP, which was also last made in 2014. And I reviewed that uh, back then or around then. And once again, a very, very similar build to the previous one, a um, an almost identical size to the previous one. And so it's practically a re-release. It, it's not, you know, they have definitely done some changes to it. But the thing about this one that I think makes it so much more valuable is that it's a pretty sizable walker. A lot of people can relate to walkers, mech-like things. It's a Star Wars walker, and yet it doesn't cost as much as a, one of the big four-legged walkers. Uh, it's way less than half the cost of one of those, and yet it still has a good imposing appearance on the battlefield, the, the, you know, the, the make-pretend battlefield, or even just on display. Uh, so even though, I don't know, maybe this, this wasn't the, the most favored walker in Star Wars history, I still think it has a place on the market. I still think that a lot of kids would like to have a big walker, but don't have parents who want to pay $140, $160 on one of the big four-legged ones. Now, I need to talk about these, don't call them junior sets anymore, the four-plus sets. We've got three of them that have been revealed so far, and I'm very torn on these. On the one hand, I think it is really, really good to offer up products that are desirable to younger kids that are easier to make to give them that lower barrier uh, to entry to get into the whole lego system building world you know the next step up from duplo or an entry if if kids have not had any brick built construction stuff in their hands at all but um i don't know these to me don't look enough like what they're supposed to represent, and I just don't know if the play value is really going to be there. Certainly, swishability is going to be there. Mm, beyond that, I don't, I don't know how fun these are going to be. I really am going to need to get these in my hands and see, see them in three dimensions and feel them and understand the size and everything to see if, see if they feel fun. Just looking at the pictures, I can't tell yet. I, I can tell you, as a Star Wars fan, that I don't like the A-Wing. And, I mean, I don't think that the kids that this is being made for will care about the inaccuracies of this. I personally do. I think it looks really silly with the, the big fins and the big, uh, the big exhausts and that little tiny bit of, what is that supposed to be, the side of, of the entrance to the Yavin 4 hangar or something? I, I don't know. That doesn't really provide much value. So, I see a, a purpose for these types of sets to exist, but I'm not sure if these are really gonna gonna hit the mark, and I'll I'll just have to to wait to really pass judgment. But then we come back over to the $30 small diorama 
world, and they've created an, a new one of those, and this looks great. I think this is exactly what a lot of folks from many backgrounds want, from adults, I mean, older adults up to the to the age of grandparents who you know, are, st are still liking stuff from their childhood, still like the sci-fi stuff from the 70s and 80s, still like Star Wars, want to have something on their mantle or uh, desk at work or whatever. You know, it, these just have a nice size. And I think this one here is presented pretty well just to, you know, basically display the figures in action. And also it has probably pretty good or at least fine play value for kids, you know, just giving a little place to play with the figures and some appropriate figures. Could have done with one more figure, though. You know, one more Stormtrooper just to even the odds a little bit. Inferno Squad. Hmm. I believe I remember hearing that this was going to be made, but it still surprised me a little bit. I guess I just kind of fell out of connection with, with the, the rumors. But, I mean, this is a Star Wars Battlefront II campaign based set uh, you know, a lot of people play the campaign or the campaigns of games even when they have a huge multiplayer component there was a whole lot of backlash to the battlefront one you know the, the reboot battlefront not really having a single player campaign at all but i mean that's neither here nor there to the set i think the set is fine i don't I, again, don't know if this is going to sell all that well, but for folks who like the single-player campaign of Battlefront, maybe it's cool. The saving grace of this one is that those agents, those Inferno Squad agents, look like elite TIE fighter pilots and or super elite dark, you know, or I shouldn't say dark, that, that brings up specific connotations, dark troopers and, and all that, but, you know, uh, stealth troopers or something like that. Uh, they they look cool. So I, I think there will be some folks who don't even care about Battlefront 2 who will be interested in this. The Praetorian Guard Battle Pack. Finally, finally, two versions of, of the helmet. And that's really all you need. I, I think there are supposed to be three different types, but two of them look very similar from most angles so two is the minimum they should have had two from the start with the snoke's throne room uh, that one probably should have had more of these dudes uh, my only problem here is that we get three praetorian guards in this praetorian guards battle pack and then you get just a random stormtrooper or first yeah first order stormtrooper i really don't need that first order stormtrooper i want a battle pack of just praetorian guards because they're so cool they're possibly the coolest things to come out of the sequel trilogy so far even though you know, ultimately they died off a little bit too quickly they just they have a lot of potential they are really good follow-ons worthy follow-ons to the royal guards of old and uh, you know just it's it's easy to play with these more and to to bring more life to them, to increase their story, to increase their numbers if you want, you know, go far off script. They just look so cool. A lot of people want these. So I think it was really, really a mistake in this case to dilute this pack by including a Stormtrooper. Would not have cost any more to just double up on the, the original style of, of uh, you know, the first style, the Snoke's throne room set style of Praetorian Guard. Um, yeah, that's about all I have to say about this one. I think the presentation is fine otherwise. And then there are just the micro fighters. And you know, the micro fighters are just cool, I think, usually. Some of them are a little bit on the weird side, but, I mean, this is a really cheap way to get an official Darth Maul. Would have been better if it also came with a hood and a cape. Would have been so much better. I, I would have been happy to see maybe three pieces removed from the back and underside of this you know parts that you don't see all that that much to get some more pieces for the figure to have them in different forms but you know for folks who want to have a darth maul or want to have another darth maul if you already have one it's cheap and that's good cheap cheap is good as long as you get good stuff with it i am no fan of young anakin skywalker um, not at all at those one of my least favorite things 
definitely rivaling Jar Jar Binks out of uh, episode one. But I, I'm, I'm not everybody. And I think that some folks will appreciate being able to get that figure. Again, in a cheap set. I do like the Nabu Starfighter a lot. I think it's a beautiful thing in universe. And I think this is a fine miniature version of it. But this pack, yes, I like this pack so much. This is, this is massable almost. Because what you do is you get one of these and you build the dewback and you build the escape pod. And then you get another one and you build another dewback with a sand trooper to go with it. And then you use the pieces of the extra escape pod to make something different. Or maybe you get three of these if, if you can. Uh, let me stick with two. <laughs> so you have one extra escape pod worth of pieces. Those are good pieces to build up things, to either add to stuff that you already have or to expand the size of the existing, you know, the first one that you got or something. This is a really, really good little pack. And, you know, the size of the do pack even though it is miniaturized, it's not that bad. You know, in the context of the funky scales of so many things in LEGO, including minifigures themselves, their proportions are so far away from the proportions of real human beings. I, I think these do-backs can, can pass as LEGO realistic scale. Plus, there are parts in sand green, and I think that includes some new ones. Overall, this entire wave feels uh, kind of lackadaisical to me. Not that there's a lot of, of lack of quality here, except for the, the questionable stuff with the, the junior stuff, but I think that's very, very subjective. And again, it's kind of TBD. We'll see how those actually feel in, in real life. But, you know, a couple of essentially re releases, um, a pretty decent little diorama set, and some some battle packs that are not all there and then just micro fighters uh, so i think there's nothing here to get mad about at least but we shall see i will probably get all of these and try to give them fair reviews as usual maybe something here will surprise me maybe not that's it for my thoughts though thanks for watching talk to you again soon